Welcome to Cage Minds. I'm your host, Micah Frankel, and today we are joined by Shauna Ormsby. Going to be talking about LFA 105 here on Friday night. Thank you so much for the time. How are you doing today, ma'am? Absolutely. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. MMA, martial arts. I heard this is kind of a, a second career for you. Uh, let's start there. How did you get drawn to combat sports? Uh, yes, yeah, so I did start training um, around the end of 2013. Um, so what basically what happened is, you know, I uh, finished off high school in 2010, um, kind of needed a new hobby for myself. I did go through a breakup and um, I had originally started uh, lifting weights because I was thinking, you know, maybe figure competition, something like that. And a friend of mine did MMA, um, and I just kind of started watching the same time with the Ultimate Fighter with Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate. It was around the same time, so it kind of just felt like it all just laid down the map, which I'm sure a lot of girls kind of had the same, you know, thing happen to them because, you know, with that Ultimate Fighter and having all the girls on that, it really did inspire a lot of us. Um, so once I saw how hard they were training, um, it kind of inspired me to do the same thing. So I started doing research and trying to find gyms. Um, at that time, the only gym that was closest to me was about 45 minutes away. So for that time, um, you know, I was making that drive every single day to the gym that I was at. And I just kept kept showing up. I just wanted to learn. I just I, I was just so inspired by them. And um, I always grew up as a shy person. So I felt like if I could force myself out of that, this was probably going to be one of the best ways to do it. And I was always pretty athletic. So it was just something that just was I was drawn to and. Uh, so far, it's been working out pretty good. What was that first stage is like? What was the beginning like jumping into training for MMA? Oh, yeah. So that was a hot mess. So I just I um so I started at a UFC gym and the guys there were so nice um, and basically just said, I, we know you're driving so far. Um, you know, not a lot of girls obviously do this. So if you show up to the training, um, you know, we'll help you out best we can. And we kind of started uh, jumping in straight into kind of like a wrestling um, jujitsu and I had bruises all over my body they I mean I appreciate them because they didn't really take it easy on me they made sure they showed me like this stuff hurts it's, it's not you know it's not meant to feel good um, so it was definitely tough but something just every day I just I kept coming back I think I um, kind of like stress fractured my pinky toe on the first day of training and, you know, it was excruciating pain, but something in me and something in my heart just said, keep showing up, just keep learning. This is awesome. This is exciting. Um, you know, you're going to get stronger. So I just kept showing up and, um, you know, now I do it. Like you said, it's my, my career um, on top of, you know, my school. So it's definitely changed my life. But from that first day, like it, it hurt. <laughs> when was the decision made to fully commit to own a school owner of a, a Carlson Gracie gym, I believe, and yes. to be fully a competitor in MMA and to step away from that previous career. When did that decision happen and what was it like? Uh, yeah, so after um, high school, I, I worked at a, actually at a, a bird sanctuary. That was my uh, thing that I loved. I loved animals and I still do, of course. Um, you know, I wanted to go to school for you know veterinarian school or vet tech or something like that something to do with animals um so i worked at that parrot sanctuary you know we had over 200 something birds so that was my life i was there you know morning to night i ran it um and then as i was figuring out what else i wanted to do and i found the gym um you know and i was driving back and forth and it kind of not not mess up but it was just it was making it hard for me to train and then work over there um so as I was showing up more and they needed help there, I was actually offered a position to work, you know, just on Sundays, um, just so that way I'm getting training, I'm showing up, I'm not missing out too much on work, I'm making something out of it. Um, so that was probably within the first five months or so of being at the gym, um, where I started transitioning away from the sanctuary and started working more hours at the gym to compensate all that driving that I was making because I just started falling more and more in love with it um my head my head coach who was the coach there and still my head coach today um 
it was about two months of training. So basically, I um I told him I want to fight, find me something. And he had never seen a girl as small as me um, actually want to do this stuff. So kind of pushed him away a little bit. But then I just kept bugging him every day. And I said, let me show you what I can do. Um, so he held mitts for me and he felt how strong my right hand was. Obviously, my te- technique wasn't quite there, but he just felt the power. And he's like, oh, crap, you know, this, this young lady has something in her that, you know, that I can maybe work with. Um, so once I kind of pushed that out of him, he just started training me. And after that, I, you know, quit my job over there and dedicated myself to driving over to the gym every day, working a few hours and then staying all night and just training. Wow. Wow. So you really found something and connected with combat sports when you found it. Oh, a hundred percent. Like I said, I was just so shy and the, the everybody there at the, the school was just so nice and it, it it really did bring out a I felt like a different side of me that I had been trying to find. There's just I couldn't find something that brought that out of me. Um and it just made me want to keep showing up, showing up and, and, and growing and learning, of course. And from what I'm seeing on tapology at least, it looks like twenty fourteen they have listed as your first amateur um mixed martial arts fight is that somewhere around the right timeline yes that's correct actually so i started um started training a little bit of everything at the same time but i had a lot more kickboxing fights before i started mma um of course they don't really have uh like a topology for kickboxing unfortunately i have i would have to sit down and count but i definitely have like over 20 something kickboxing fights um so i did about i believe four of those before i took my first mma fight well, what was that so first I, I, kickboxing bout like? What were your thoughts in your head going into that one? What was that like? Yeah, I, honestly, I got to say the way I've, I've, I've worked is I kind of go in that tunnel vision. I'm very like, I'm a very calm person already, just naturally. And I, I was definitely excited. I, I, but I just, I breathe through everything. I relax and I'm just like, I do this in the gym every day. I'm sparring. Like, you know, I don't know what this is. I'm, 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 an, I'm not a person that used to like being in front of people in front of the camera. So that's again, why I force in, in a sense, I force myself to do this because it constantly makes me go in the spotlight, makes me have to, um, you know, handle having, you know, eyes on me and people talking to me, it, it forces that out. So, um, I just, I thought it was super exciting for me to do something very out of my comfort zone and, you know, high school friends and stuff thinking, Oh, you know, Shauna's so shy. What is she doing? She's doing that. Um, so it kind of, it, it did pump me up. It was pretty exciting, but, um, I definitely did not know really what to expect because it's definitely something I'd never done before. Um, and to do kickboxing. So I just, I appreciated my training partners and all my coaches that, that they've never taken it easy on me. So I've never, going to a fight thinking, Oh, like I got hit too hard. What is this? I always kind of, you know, I kind of knew what, what to expect. And we fast forward all the way to where we are now. You have professional fights under your belt and MMA and you've even stepped in the ring. How much does that blow you away? Just, I guess how far you've come. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's definitely awesome. I'm, 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 I'm proud of myself for continuing. I've, as you can see, I've had a tough journey. I've never had an easy fight and I've never wanted one. Um, but I've, you know, some people have a, a more step-by-step career and, you know, their fights are planned out nice and, you know, they kind of get to build themselves off. I've always taken really tough fights. And again, cause I'm so small and where I am in Florida, there's really nobody to fight. So I was always traveling Um, So I've always taken these big fights and, you know, girls that have, you know, some of the top professional Adam weight, right. You know, fighters right now I've fought, um, you know, I've fought girls with over 70 something fights. I've always taken these tough fights. Um, So for me, I feel like this is definitely, it's been a, it's a long process and I didn't know where I was going to take it, but opening up my school, seeing my students, my, my kids classes, my adults, how empowered they are by seeing me compete and me continuing, whether, you know, our saying here is you win or you learn, you know, there is no giving up because if you give up, that's a loss. Um, so it kind of keeps empowering me to keep moving forward, which has got me to this point where, you know, I get to make my debut at LFA. So I'm super excited. Real quick, before we get to the fight, cause I know I want to touch on that for a couple minutes. When did you get to the point where you said, that you were ready for gym ownership, that you wanted to dive that far into immersing yourself with combat sports. That's a big step. 
Absolutely. So, um, so at the UFC gym that I was at for, I, I believe, five or six years, um, I did end, end up eventually becoming the manager there. Um, I've always been a very driven person and, um, you know, just very good at whatever I, you know, put my hands on, I, I figure out how to work it. Um, so I, I became a manager there and I learned a lot of do's and don'ts. Um, I was not really comfortable with the ownership there. So that kind of drove me to want to open up my own place, um, you know, with my coach, he was the head trainer there as well. And he's also, um, you know, my professor, um, and he's the black belt of the school. So it, it, after, so we opened up six months before COVID hit. Um, so that was June of what is that? 2019. Um, it was definitely an interesting first six months, but I, there was just a point where we were, you know, tired of having our sport, which our love, you know, of jujitsu was kind of being put down in the in the gym and not being, um, you know, appreciated. And when you feel appreciated, you kind of you got to move forward. You can't just feel stuck. Um, so I was kind of tired of feeling stuck. Um, so it just something in me just said, you know, I need to quit. I need to find something. So I quit there. I took six months off. And from there, I was actually training clients and parks. Um, you know, they followed me. They didn't want to lose me as a, as a trainer and a coach. So that kind of got me by until I was able to find an, an amazing family that was like, Hey, we're going to help you do this. Just, you know, let us know what you need, how you need to do this. And from there, you know, that's where we are, are today and very fortunate to still be able to be open during that you know, this whole COVID year and not knowing if we're going to be open up or not. And we're thriving more than, more than I could, you know, ever believe right now. So I'm super thankful for it. I just, I think when you bring a good vibe into an atmosphere, the people feed off that because that's what they need right now. They need positivity. They need growth. They need to be pushed. Um, so it's, this is definitely something that I love to do and I'm glad I get to do it now. And it, it keeps me motivated and it keeps me, uh, continue with the fight because obviously it, it is uh, difficult fighting while trying to, to run a school but I'm constantly teaching techniques so it keeps my mind refreshed and now we can get to it Friday night heading over to Oklahoma and going to be facing Tabitha Ricci what do you think about this upcoming challenge yeah I am uh, I'm very super excited about this one this is one that um, you know I actually wanted this fight um, my, I did just fight a month ago. I fought somebody who, you know, came in overweight. Um, I was told by a lot of people I shouldn't have taken that fight. Um, but I'm a fighter. So I'm like, if I showed up, it is what it is, you know, pay the purse, whatever. And, and I fought, um, but again, cause I'm, I'm such a small frame person, not that to use an excuse, but they, they use that advantage. So with this, um, I know she is my size. We're both fighters. We're both there to bang and put a war. My thing is I like to throw a, a, a show. I like for people to be excited about my fights um, and to have an opponent that, you know, wants to do the same thing. For me, that's exciting. And I feel like we're very um, equal on the same page. Um, you know, I think she's either a brown or black belt in jujitsu. Uh, I just got my brown belt. Um, you know, I held on to my purple belt for four years. So in reality, I could be a black belt right now, but I, I wanted to take my time. So our jujitsu game is strong. Um, I'm not sure how much kickboxing she's done. I am a three-time kickboxing champion. Um, so with my hands, I feel real strong with it. So I think this is the, the right matchup for me at the right time with my mindset. Everything feels really good. And I feel like um, everybody's going to have a nice war to, war to watch. Tabitha's. 2-0 and in the LFA, 4-0 and overall. Was part of the intrigue with this fight, wanting this fight, being that she does have some hype behind her? It does help. So, um, to be honest, I was, you know, offered a few fights, different fights. They did see what happened with me, um, you know, at the last show and, you know, said, you know, we've got some girls that we can fight. And I actually did want to fight Tabitha. Um, for me, if you're not going to fight who's supposed to be the best, um, you know, what are you fighting for? That's been my entire career, whether I, you know, you win or learn. Um, so for me, I know that if I, you know, when I do come out victorious, that obviously that's going to look good for me. Um, but I want to be able to be sharp for any fight that I have, but it, it definitely does help. Going back to that icon fight, I just got to be nosy. How much weight did your opponent miss by? 
Uh, so she came in um, first at 119 point, I think like four or six. Then we had left and they said she ended up weighing at 118 point something. Um, and, you know, what kind of upset me is that she was putting on TikTok videos of her weighing 130 something pounds, you know, just a couple of days before the fight, knowing that she had to cut the weight. Um, so for me, I, you know, I, I walk around barely at 125. I'm lucky if I, if I can do that. Um, so I just found it super disrespectful. I know it was her pro debut. Um, for me, I hadn't fought in a little while, so I was excited to get back and I was excited to take any fight that was offered to me. Um, but yeah, she came in at 119 point something. And then this upcoming one, this is a straw weight fight, right? Yes, this is a straw weight. So I actually originally, um, would normally do atom weight. Um, I've been gaining a lot of muscle and some more mass on me to be able to compete at straw weight because there's just not a lot of atom weight fights, unfortunately. Um, but from what I understand, you know, um, I believe Tabitha has interest in 105, so it tells me that she could make that weight too. So I know that makes us a little bit more on the fairgrounds, but normally I would fight at 105. Right, I'm thinking off the top of my head. It's really King of the Cage and Invicta are the only two promotions that I know. Uh, have atom weight titles that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, that unfortunately that really is a, a lot mostly on Invicta. Um, I did start with King of the Cage originally. Um, I had two fights with them, well three. One of them was a tournament one. Um, but that's pretty much where I got my atom weight fights, and then you know that kind of moved away from King of the Cage. And again, there's just not a lot of girls that are coming to build up so a lot of them are just moving to straw weight just because there's not a lot of uh, fights offered unless it's overseas of course and then for your focus is that putting you at a place where you're considering yourself a straw weight and it'd be better more beneficial to put on muscle i guess I am starting to feel that way. So um, I'm, I'm very strong at 105. Um, any opponent I've always had, they've always said they didn't expect, you know, how hard my punches were or, you know, my grip strength or anything. So I know I'm strong at 105. But now that I've, you know, I used to walk around at 112 pounds. Um, that was just my walk rate now, a walk away. Um, so now that I've gained the mass, I've figured out how to keep my speed with my mass. Um, and I don't have to hurt myself when I'm cutting. I don't. I can continue to eat what I need to eat properly, but more so I'm not suffering. I'm not, you know, worried about what, what my next meal is. So it actually, it does feel up to the fight. I'm not stressed so much. We're talking with Shauna Ormsby, going to be in action at LFA 105. And that last comment was awesome. I love hearing fighters talk about eating instead of starving. Yes, it, it does. It really does make a difference for, you know, for me, if, if you feel good, then you can perform, you know, not just because you can win the fight better, but you can perform better, which I think is important as for a show, you know, they want to see that their fighters are, are putting out brawls or, you know, being able to maybe take more damage and they can continue the fight more. Um, for me, that's just, that's more important. Plus, of course, the health. And well, it's great talking about fights. There's something else I have to bring up and... <laughs> I heard that you just have this awesome, awesome squirrel. Yes, <laughs> yes, I do. So um, um, I actually got him around March of last year, around the time COVID started. Um, so all my summer camp kids named him Carlson, like like the school. So he he's got his own Instagram. It's Carlson Jiu Jitsu Squirrel. Um, I basically raised him from a little. He was maybe two weeks old. His eyes were still closed. He was tossed out of his his tree and found on the floor. So I think either he may have been sick and his mom kicked him out, or he you know fell and his mom couldn't find him. So me being the animal lover, I, I took him in and raised him. And he's got to be like the coolest thing. Everybody in the gym is you know always. So excited to see him. He's excited to see everybody. He wants to play and wrestle with you. So he's super cute. Right. I, I didn't know squirrels actually wrestled and did jujitsu. And, and then I'm, I'm like stuck. While I've watched that last post video that you have on his page about five times now. It's amazing. I'm telling you, he's like one of the best training partners too. Because you know what? Squirrels are obviously very fast. They're very nimble. Um, and they, they know how to use their footwork. So it's crazy. But, you know, with him, even just chasing me around the gym, I got to tell you, he like probably works my cardio more than just running. What did you already like right away when you got him, had the, uh, the thoughts to, you know, put him on the mats to, I want to say, be this rough with him or active. 
Honestly, I kind of, I, I really didn't know what to expect. I had never encountered a squirrel. Obviously, when you see them outside, you know, they kind of just run away from you. So I've rescued a lot of animals, but this was the first squir squirrel. So I, I honestly had no idea what to expect. But when he, you know, would follow me around and he would, you know, jump on me and then start chasing me. And he just kind of naturally started attacking my hand in a good way. He's never tried, you know, biting or anything um and and now he's just like so trained he knows everybody he tries not to scratch you on purpose um he literally just wants love he wants to play he wants to give you kisses all that stuff and who got the idea to build him his own social media it was me i gotta i gotta admit um you always see all the people online they got the cool animal stuff and i'm like i have so many people here that they, they come here and he like makes their day so they you know they kind of kind of told me too you should um just because it can make somebody else be like oh that's so cute or i mean i like to look at animal videos and see cute stuff it makes my day seriously i hit follow already everybody else you need to carlson jujitsu squirrel i'm seriously there's not a better page on instagram i know it's so funny and, and as soon as i got him too everybody's telling me about this the superhero squirrel girl and it was just crazy i'd never heard of her before and i guess we got like the same haircut and everything so i guess it was meant to be <laughs> sometimes it works out like that that's awesome right. <laughs> and now real quick you're coming in as the underdog to lfa 105 can we get a, a last word from you to the naysayers Absolutely. Um, so never underestimate somebody. Um, obviously, things can, can go different ways. So just be prepared to see something you've not seen before from, you know, myself. Or if you don't know me yet, um, you're going to understand why my nickname is Bam Bam. Uh, and I real quick want to ask, you have the professional boxing. Was that another pushing yourself to step outside of your comfort zone moment? Or was that taking an opportunity that was presented? Um, I, it, it was definitely both. I actually fought MMA uh, three weeks before that boxing fight, um, and I came out brand new. I felt so good after that, and when that opportunity came up against, um, you know, Marissa, who's a, also an, another MMA fighter, I've had so many kickboxing fights, so I was comfortable in the ring, um, and, you know, um, with that, I just felt like, I told my coach, hey, we got this let's just go, let's just do it. Um, and, you know, thankfully I was able to come out with the win, but my hands have always come out first. Um, with my first couple of kickboxing fights, I was actually throwing too many punches and not enough kicks. So I have fixed that, but um, it's just my hands. God gave me these hands. So, um, you know, I'm definitely looking to, to do some, some more boxing fights in the future. It's been great getting to talk to you, Shauna. How can everybody keep up with you on social media? Yes, of course. Um, so I have Instagram, so it's at Shauna Bam Bam. Um, I also have a Facebook page, and I now have opened up a Twitter page at Shauna Ormsby. Um, so if you guys can catch me on there, um, feel free to message me anytime, any questions. I uh, would love that. Thank you for the time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. LFA 105 on UFC Fight Pass Friday night.